Yeah, this is scripting, scripting. Yeah, and uh, then we will, uh, I will show how to um, work with uh, packages by other authors so that you don't need to program everything by yourself. Uh, we will use this to get a package from asset store and to um, to implement or to get um, to get uh, the first player control working so you can walk through your scene like in a game. Uh, of course, you could program this by yourself. It's not that difficult, but it's also much easier if you just take something that has been already done and you know it works. And yeah, then then there's those inter object interactions. That's that's for the end, and that's it basically for the day. And then, uh, then the next, uh, the next days we will have those split workshops for uh, this uh, scientific visualization part and the uh, uh, multimedia art part. Where the main difference is in uh, in uh, in that we will still use the same technology, but uh, in the scientific visualization part, we will have some actual scientific data which we will interpret through uh, through Unity, and in the uh, art part, you will use those three D scans made by the phone app, as I told you last time. So uh, at the end of today i will show you how to use that uh, phone app so that um, so that you can prepare your scans before you come here uh, if if you want it, it's very easy you just like have some object you walk around it with your phone it uploads it to the cloud and after a couple of minutes it gives you back the uh, the 3d model so we can do it here with something i don't know but of course, uh, if you don't prepare it at home, you can quickly do it here, but then you will be scanning the heater, the uh, vacuum cleaner and stuff like this. So it might be funny, but maybe you will find something funnier at home. So we can start with uh, opening the old, uh, the, um, the project from yesterday and we will continue from that. Um, yes, uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, hello. My name is Makala. Uh, I'm a software developer in the embedded domain. I'm working uh -huh. with Audio, with uh, Linux, that kind of stuff. Uh, the hobby was doing some data game development and okay. a little bit of the data background with Unity. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So, 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 so I, I suppose you're more interested in the uh, uh, multimedia art part, right? Uh, or... Both of them. Both of them. Okay, great. Uh, I mean, uh, if 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 most people attend both of them, which I would recommend, then of course it won't necessarily be two times as long because there's still some overlap in in what's uh, what's being taught in in those two. So, uh, I, I mean, yeah, definitely. If if you want to do both, uh, let's do both, and. Um, Mm, did you download the, the, the project I, we posted on Telegram? So, so um, the one I made yesterday? Yeah, yeah. So please, please do it and open it because since you haven't opened it before, it will download the packages and recompile the packages. It takes some time. Hmm? What's a Wi-Fi password? Uh, oh. I don't know. My computer already remembers it from the last year. <laughs> Password is nine five six. Oh, it's for rest or uh, five ten. Uh, five ten. Uh, nine five six. Uh, uh, nine three six. Three seven. Seven. Okay. Oh, nine three six. Nine three seven. Yes. Oh. Sorry. 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 Sorry.
Yeah. So please start downloading the stuff. It will be a couple of minutes. You mean the start from the project we did yesterday. And uh yeah, just we will just continue so that we have um, you have your own own stuff there. Um Oh. So, well, what we did yesterday, if you open the project, it might happen that you will not see the scene that we were working on yesterday. And instead, there's like some new uh, untitled scene. Uh, if that happens, uh, wait, 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 there's someone online. Looks like he's writing to the chat, or maybe not. I don't know. Perhaps connecting to the sound. Hmm? Perhaps he's connecting to the sound. No, no, okay. I think I just, yeah, I, I will hide this. Yeah. <sighs> So, um, if if your scene is not open, you will find it uh, under the scenes directory in your assets. Uh, yesterday it was called sample scene, so we double click it, and it should load. Uh, it should load where you finished yesterday. Just to recap what we did yesterday, so we played with the uh, with like putting the objects in the scene, resizing, and whatever. Uh, Remember, if you uh, if you need to align stuff, it's it's sometimes helpful to switch between uh, between uh, orthogonal projection and perspective projection. Uh, also, use the shortcuts to rotate along a specific axis if if you want to be sure that that your your object is positioned the way you really wanted it. Um, We've talked about how this is the scene hierarchy under which you have the objects in the scene, uh, that those exist as some references or setup in the scene file, while here you see the actual files that your project is made of. And uh, most important part, the inspector window, where you see details of the selected object, whether it be a game object here or uh, or some files a file here um and if you click on some object then in the inspector uh, you see components of that object each game object has a transform component that defines its position rotation and scale and the other components are uh, they are re really all scripts in C sharp, but of course some have like some special names and icons. But the same way as you put predefined components from Unity, you can also put your own scripts as components of the uh, of the object. Um, yeah. So the the main entity uh, is an object and. The functionality of the object is defined by scripts. Uh, we made a script yesterday, a simple script which uh, which changed the color of the object it's attached to uh, according to the uh, key that was pressed by the user. Um, in order to change the color, uh, you had to get, okay, first, normally you would need to get the object which you want to operate on. But since the script is part of the object which we want to operate on, we don't need to get that object. It's implicitly supposed that you were talking about the object which has the script attached. Then you need to find the component 
uh, the component which you want to change. So the component we wanted to change was the renderer. And when we got the renderer, so we tell it that we need to get the component of the type renderer. So this is a function call that returns, that gives us the renderer object. And then we look at some properties of that object, of the renderer, and we wanted to change the color. So we know or we find in, in Unity documentation that a renderer will have a property called material. And if it only has one material, that property will give you this single material that is there. And that the material also has a property called color, which is this base map color here. So that's something I told you yesterday. It's also something that you can Google if you forget because it's in the uh, Unity documentation. Uh, yeah. So that was uh, end of part three in my notes. And uh, we will move to part four. Uh, and in part four, we will move and uh, rotate uh, the objects in our scene from uh, the script. So, for example, let's start with uh, rotating the object. It's just that I'm sure that I know what I'm doing. I will open it here in, in my... So, uh, we'll pick one of the objects and we'll let it rotate. Uh, again, we pick whatever you want. Uh, it can be one of the single objects. You can also, of course, rotate the whole group because the uh, this is, again, an empty object that has a transform, nothing else. So uh, we create a new script. Again, uh, right-click into Assets or go through the Assets menu and find Create C-sharp script. And we'll give it a name. For example, again, uh, rotate is not really a good name because it's descriptive, but it's too abstract. So it's very likely that there will be some other entity, like some function or something that's already called rotate. So always try to be descriptive, but also specific. So I will call, call it rotate object. Uh, you can call it rotate something. It's very likely that there's no entity called something in, in Unity. And uh, then we decide which object we put it on. And again, we have many options on how to put the component. This script is a component, how to put it on our object. So we can drag it and drop it here. If you're drag and dropping, just make sure that when releasing the button, it doesn't show this uh, crossed out sign, but, uh, but this link sign. So let's say I'll select one of these groups. So if I click on the group object, then okay. Uh, the other uh, the other way, of course, is okay, I can delete it. Uh, the other way is to go to the object and drag and drop it here. That leads to the same same result. Or I can go through add component and, for example, start typing the name. So I write rotate and. It's, Here's the rotate object script. And uh, if I click, uh, if I want to edit my script, I can either double click on the script name here, or if you single click, it will find where the script is located here in the assets. And you can double click on it here. Uh, like through the through the workshop, I will be always trying to show you all the different ways how to do it. You will at some point find a preferred way to do it, but so that you know that there's, there's many, many roads uh, leading to the same goal and uh, all of them are correct. So um, the idea was to rotate the object and rotate the object that we are attached to so how can we rotate the object? Uh, we will, of course, do it in uh, in 
uh, in the update function because in, at each frame we will change uh, we will change the rotation of the object. And again, we can we could do it directly by directly manipulating the uh, rotation uh, the rotation transform element, but we can also go to the Unity documentation and find that there is that the transform itself, right? Uh, so Unity transform, uh, you find the scripting API for transform. So this is uh, the properties and functions that, that the transform object, uh, transform, but again, sorry for the word object, for object-oriented programming, it, it's an object, but in Unity speech, I should say a component. So the transform component has some properties. You see there's some angles, uh, scale, position, rotation, but it also has some methods and if you go through the methods, you find that there's a method called rotate. And it's used to rotate game objects in a variety of ways. And the rotation is often provided as an Euler angle and not a quaternion, which is a good thing because uh, an angle is something we all know. That's the Euler angle. The quaternion is some uh, linear algebra stuff like a matrix that defines the rotation. That's like not let's not delve into that now, and let's just use this uh, rotate function. Uh, rotate function in the way where uh, you define an angle. Uh, around one uh, or each of the axes around uh, along which you want to rotate that object. So here in the declaration, it tells us that we can use the function rotate and it will accept three parameters, uh, angle along the x-axis, y-axis, uh, z-axis, and uh, this has some default value, so we can um, we can ignore it because we can use just the default. So this tells us that, that the rotate function has three parameters and explains the parameters. So, uh, and the rotate function was part of the transform component. So first we need to get the transform component. So we write get uh, component. Uh, if you have this auto completion here, it's it's cool because you don't need to put, type all your stuff and just like click out to complete. If you don't, don't worry. It's just like we'll just be typing a bit more. So uh, the type of the component was transform. So this tells us that the get component function should give us the transform component, and it's a function call. So we need to put the um, I'll put the parentheses uh, there. This, so this gives us a transform component. And on that component, using the dot operator, we call the method called rotate, which we found in the documentation. And so let's say we rotate it along the x-axis by one degree uh, at each frame. So rotate one, one, zero, no rotation along the second axis and no rotation along the third axis. Also, don't forget that at the at the end of the function call, you need to put a semicolon. So when you get this done, yeah. Uh,
Okay. So save your script. Save. Go back to Unity. It will recompile. And if you had your script correctly attached to an object, also you should not see any errors down here. If you see errors there, then open the console. It will tell you where you made a mistake and what it thinks is the mistake. And if you have no mistakes, you can hit play and something in your scene should rotate. In my case, it seems, ah, oh, no, it seems okay. Yeah. So we can, uh, let's say we want to change the speed of the rotation uh, during, uh, like again, based on user input, for example. So, what I will want to do is um, to rotate not by one degree, but by some uh, by some number of degrees. And uh, I want I want to be able to change that number. So first, uh, we will be changing that number using the keyboard like we did with the color yesterday. But first, we need to save that number somewhere so that it can be changed. Because here we have hardcoded one. So uh, what we want to do is to create a variable uh, that will store the uh, the angle. Now, uh, for those who only programmed in Python, uh, in Python, variables don't have types. So you just say something equals something. And if on the right side is a number, then that variable will be a number. If on the right side is a text, a string, then the variable will be a string. Uh, that's not the case in C sharp. In C sharp is strongly typed. So you always have to say what type of uh, variable it is. So first we need to say uh, what type it is. Uh, here we're uh, operating with floating point numbers, so that type is called a float. And since this is part of a class, we also need to say whether that variable is visible from the outside. So uh, the class is a component in Unity. So if your variable is visible from the outside, then you can change it. Then, then other components can change that variable while your game is running. If it's not visible from the outside, so-called private, then, then you cannot change it. That then it can only be changed using functions inside this the uh, this script. So in this case, we we will create a public variable, so one which is visible to the outside. So it's a public uh, public float uh, floating point number public float, and we give it some name. Again, the name has to start with uh, uh, with a letter. Uh, I, I don't know. I I can make it a big bigger if it helps, but I'm not sure if it really helps. So yeah. Uh, okay. Or maybe we can switch the. I don't know if it's switching to light yeah, team light would team. would be better visible than the dark team. And not that I know how to do it, but. <laughs> I think Control K, Control P, something like that. Or control P, control K in this edit right mm -hmm. uh, But basically, it's in uh, in the view. View mm. uh, appearance. Um, I think it used to be in the editor layout, more more like that. Where? Editor layout. Layout. Mm. Okay, now that's it. Let me check on my notes. Okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll just continue. Okay. And yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, name of the variable. So, let's just call it angle uh, or rotation angle, whatever. Rotation angle. Uh, and at the beginning, it will just equal one. So, and now, instead of rotating by one, like here, we rotate by rotation angle. Uh, control K, then Control T, and it will show you the... Control K, and then... And then Control T. 
Um, my stems. Yeah, actually, it looks better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let's argue about the, the team. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so no, 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 that one was better because because this one doesn't, uh, for some reason, yeah, yeah, I, I want the different colors for the for the different types. I don't know why, why that one didn't do it. It's okay, maybe it's not that much visible, but. So, if we define this uh, public uh, variable, public float called rotation angle, and then put it here, then now, uh, okay, save, of course, control S. Uh, now, if you go, if you save and go back to Unity, look what changed on your object. And uh, those of you who are programmers, I think you will appreciate this because it's one of my favorite, uh, favorite features of Unity. And that is that public members are exposed in the uh, in the inspector so you can modify them here if you define a public member it appears as a as a new field so now you have this uh, one here so of course uh, you can you can uh, okay let's run the game and it rotates as it did before now you can live change the rotation angle here by changing this number like if I put zero, it stops, of course. If I put negative number, it turns the other way. Uh, I can also uh, click next, next, next to the next to number and 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 change the value using mouse. Uh, and remember that if you make modifications in the play mode, that includes these modifications. When I stop play mode, the number resets to the original value to one. Okay. So now let's uh, add, uh, let's combine it with the stuff from yesterday with this reaction to uh, to key presses. So uh, we use some other keys. And that wasn't very smart for me to use Y, but uh, okay, I will use Q and W. Uh, so one key will increase the speed of rotation and the second key will decrease the speed of rotation. So this is uh, what we did yesterday. So today uh, we will... Uh, so now in each frame, we need to rotate the thing and then see if the user is pressing a key or not and if he is pressing a key then increase the speed of rotation if he is not pressing the key then decrease the speed of rotation yeah so we're already rotating uh using the variable here so now we uh, add this if input get key down you see that it already tells me and key code so I will use Q, uh, Q to decrease the speed of rotation. How to decrease the speed of rotation? I need to uh, change the variable rotation angle and uh, save into, I need to set it to rotation angle. So rotation angle equals rotation angle minus one, for example. So that's my Q key and I copy paste this whole thing put it just below and change the key uh, so let's say W will instead do rotation angle plus one Take this. If I mean, if you have uh, just yeah, yeah. If I'm too fast, I can slowly repeat it again. <laughs> uh, write this, or you can even copy it from the old script, and uh, just make sure that you have the correct key code, and then use the your variable. Mine was called rotation angle. If yours was had a different name, then put a different name there. 
Uh, don't forget that the variable name really needs to be exactly the same as here, including all capital letters or small letters. And then you set the angle to be equal to angle minus one. And then to so that you don't have to type this again, you copy, copy paste the whole block and change the key code. And instead of minus one, do plus one. Okay, everyone there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No? Yes, no? Yes, yes. Okay, so again, we save, go back. Unity recompiles. It compiles and we start the game. And with Q, I'm increasing. With W, I'm decreasing the this number and again since i'm doing it in play mode when i exit the play mode it resets to the original value um you noticed that um even if we use the same number here, uh, the speed of rotation on your computer is probably different than uh, the speed of rotation on my on mine. So, because we're updating the angle at each frame, and depending on how fast your computer is, the frame rate is different. So the speed of rotation, uh, as you see it, will also be different. If you don't like this, and if you would like your uh, your game to behave the same for every user, regardless of how fast their computer is, you somehow need to incorporate uh, real time into um, into the calculation of the of, of the speed of rotation. Uh, that's not difficult again. So. What we can do is we can reuse, uh, re let's duplicate the script. So I go here and I press Ctrl D, or you can do copy paste. Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, all these operators, like while or if, all these operators, they go from the top. So, um, 
what I did now. So I duplicated the script using Control D. You can also do traditional copy paste, Control C, Control V, or like uh, it's not in the right click menu, but somehow duplicate the script. And that should remind us that now we have an error because I have two scripts uh, which define the same class and also the name of the class is in the second script is not the same as the name of the script, which is a requirement in Unity. So I renamed this script, the new one. Uh, it was called Rotate Object 1. I mean, you can keep Rotate Object 1. I rename it to, I don't know, Rotate Object Uniform. Then I open it and rename it here as well rename the class yeah so now if i save it just to make sure that i did it right now if i save it unity recompiles and i should see no error here so create this new script and uh, let's let's modify uh, let's modify the script um uh, so we will be changing the rotation angle uh, by some predefined difference. Uh, so let's create another variable, quick float, uh, I don't know, angle difference. And uh, I'll tell you in advance that one will be very slow. So let's first start with 10 and put the difference at five. At least that's how I have the numbers here. So it's probably something that should make sense more or less. And now, uh, now here, we want to rotate the angle So this function is called at HB, uh, uh, every frame. If we define, if we know the duration of one frame, so the time that uh, elapsed between the last frame and the new frame, uh, then you can just multiply this number with the duration. And then if my computer is slow, so the duration between the individual frame is long, then um, then it will rotate more during one frame. And if it's less, then it will, uh, if it's fast, then it paints more frames and I do less rotation in a single frame. So I need to get the time that elapsed between uh, subsequent uh, frame renders. And this I can get uh, using time dot delta time and I can retain the code the key codes why not and yes I I also define this angle difference variable so that I can modify if I'm uh, changing it by one or some other other value. So instead of doing minus one and plus one, I will change by uh, by this. And the good thing is that then I can define these variables in the inspector. I don't need to go to the script and change the script and rec recompile the script every time I want to change that setting. So this is something that makes sense to have uh, exposed in the uh, in the inspector window. So time time to delta time is one mm, one way how to track time. So let me know if you if you have this. Yeah 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 yeah. No. Yes. Almost. Oh, 
how how do you again remove all the, all the errors? Do you name it at what time? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It, it, the 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 file is the same the same as the last time. Mm -hmm. So so the yes uh, and the one at the end as well. Yeah. And so now, if I go back, and I don't know, so in my case, I will just uh, replace this old script. So I remove it and instead put the new one, or you can put the new script on a different, different object uh, as you wish. And uh, I run it and now you see that uh, the rotation angle will increase by the whatever i defined here and it's really in degrees per second so maybe five is not enough so if i now I want to make the interface like react faster. So I put something like 15 here. And in the beginning, I put 15. And if so, so, so this way I can I can change the predefined behavior of those scripts. Did you select the objects? Uh, okay, uh, because you could, um, yeah, sometimes the, if you click in the scene window while, while running, then then your uh, your buttons will stop working because instead of, because they're used to, I don't know, select the tools here. So so click, just click on the game window, inside the game window, and, and you should get it back again. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now we can rotate the object. Uh, we will do, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now we, so for rotating the object, we had this rotate function, this was cool because just like that's what we want now. Um, let's say we want to move the object, we want to translate it. So I say the word translate. There, of course, is a translate function which moves the transform in the direction yeah. and distance of translation. Uh, yes, that's cool. But uh, here I want to show you how to directly manipulate the transform because that will also show you how to use one of the important uh, important primitive types in Unity, and that's a, a vector. So let's create a new script, call it move object or something like that. So I'll create a move object script. And this move object, what I want to do is uh, just just start moving it. So uh, I get the uh, current position of that uh, of that object. And the position is stored on the transform. To get it, I can uh, again do get component uh, type transform, and it's a function call. Then I will find that this is not enough to get the transform itself. I need to call transform again here. So transform and uh, I'm interested in the position, so I get it like this, uh, get component transform position. 
And what I want to do is uh, to add to the current value of this, uh, this position uh, so what I would like to do is equals and repeat this whole thing, get transform, transform position. I will show it quickly, but don't do it because it will get confusing very easily plus something. Uh, okay, that's a long line and not much readable. So what we will do instead, we will save. We will save this value to a temporary variable will accessible here. We don't need to uh, know the type beforehand because we're creating it using a function call or we're actually creating it from some other variable. So just we'd say uh, var that, that will automatically deduce the type of the variable. So let's call it var plus equals this. Now uh, I can just say position equals position plus and now plus what? So a position is a 3D vector. Uh, so yeah, a vector that has three components and in uh, in Unity that type is called vector three. So there's a type called vector three. So we create some vector with, a, uh, with some values like 0 0.1, uh, 0 and 0, for example. Now this will not work still. Uh, so a little bit about a little uh, little more about the syntax of of objects and even uh, small primitive objects like this in uh, in C sharp. So first uh, first issue that you would encounter is that this is not valid syntax uh, because this is not really creating a new vector that we can add here. That's not enough. You also need to use the keyword new. So to the current position, we are adding a new vector three with these, uh, these values as, um, yeah, with these uh, values as its components. Again, this is not enough. If, if if you try to do it like this and go here, it will tell you that it cannot convert from double to float. And that's some very unfortunate uh, issue with the interaction of C Sharp and the Unity engine. Uh, vector three is in a single precision float. And if you don't specify that your number is a single precision float, it's implicitly supposed to be a double precision float. And the conversion between single precision and double precision cannot be done automatically. So those who are not programmers completely forget what I said. Just remember, if you're creating a new vector, you need to put an F at the end of each number, which is not a zero or, or uh, an integer. You can also put it behind the zeros. But, but that's fine. Yeah. So if I'm creating a vector uh, of floating point values, I need to say 0 0.1 F. Uh, also, there must be no spaces between the number and, and F. So you should have it exactly like this. Then when you save it, I, I will soon open it again. I just need to try for myself if I... Uh, if what I did was actually correct, because I might have a little error there as well. Ah, okay. So first, uh, I have a typo. I I wrote poison instead of position. So position should look like this. That's better. It compiles, it doesn't work. Unfortunately, so. Uh, the reason why it doesn't work is that this position, uh, yeah, I cannot have it as easy as I want it. Uh, it won't work that way because if 
uh, if I'm now modifying this POS variable, it's uh, not really modifying the existing variable, but uh, changing only the temporary one with no relation to the original one. Uh, so I cannot save the position itself. What I can save is uh, the transform. So uh, I can, I will call it transform, delete this position from here. And I need to write a little bit more. So it's going to be transform the position. Was transform the position. position back to back. This already uh, should work. For the programmers among us, uh, the reason is that while transform is some, uh, transform is probably not a game object, but it's some object that's always returned by reference, while vector three is uh, is kind of like a struct. It's it's a um, oh my god, I forgot how, how they call it in C sharp. In, but it, it's like a simple object that that basically has only uh, only those three values, only default constructors. And um, if you recall, uh, and a position is really just a vector three. No, uh, nothing special so when you get the position it, it just gives you the vector and it always gives gives it to you as a value uh, while the transform is a um, more complicated object so uh, yes yeah. and part, all of the classes are created by reference and all of this handled by reference and all structs are handled by magic again um, in C sharp if yeah. I remember correctly all of the structs are passed by value by default and all of the Classes are bad by reference. Uh, and I've checked vector three. Yeah. yeah, it's just struct, nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure if if it's the same as in C plus plus, but in C plus plus. No, uh, in C plus plus, you have the, 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 the class and struct. No, no, no. I, I, I mean, I, I wasn't sure if, if they call it struct or if there's some other name, but yeah, yeah. I actually have a question. Uh, so, so we. Uh, this uh, what do you call? Basically, it, it calls uh, it constantly creates and destroys uh, destroys a new vector tree each frame. Yeah. If you're uh, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, yes. It's a uh, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I I I I I don't know. I think the compiler somehow optimizes it, but this is really the way. To do it, like like if if this was a C plus plus code, it, it it would lead to a horrible performance. But uh, in C sharp, it's like or like in Unity, there, there's another thing. Like um, the Unity itself has has it it. I mean, it's plain C sharp. It it's like not modifying the language itself, but it adds a lot of functionality through. Uh, through its own libraries, so uh, so very often, yeah, things work in unexpected ways. But uh, now, yeah, when I start my game, my object flies away. It's my. Uh, uh, okay, look. Yeah, okay, uh, C sharp are not the same structs in C because they have properties. Again? They, they what? Structs are not the same structs in C because they have properties. Again? They have properties and methods. So, uh, they have properties in you mean like methods. Structs. So they were not the question. Okay. Because <laughs> they, they, they came back. Uh, that uh, sounds 
Uh, I mean, like in, in, in C++, the only difference is between a struct and a class is basically that struct has default public visibility and class has a default private visibility. No. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. If, if you just define a struct and, and don't say, and, and define uh, uh, define members, uh, then they will be public. And if, if yeah, you do it with a class, they, they will be private. The difference is uh, that structs no. are also handled by value and mm? uh, the structs. No, I, I mean in, in C++. Uh, aren't classes in C++ handled by reference? No. Can it create? No. No. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so in C++, if, if you want to pass by reference, you need to explicitly say you passing by reference. And yeah, so. I mean, if you're more of a C++ person, then you can try Unreal Engine instead of Unity. Uh, I think at first that in each photo uh, field is a uh, the reference in C++, but maybe I'm mistaken. No, no, no. no definitely, the default default way of passing stuff in C plus plus is okay. is by value. If if you want to pass by reference, you have to say it explicitly, either as like in a function parameter that it accepts a reference. Then you cannot tell from the call site. You cannot tell whether you're passing by value or by reference if you don't see the function definition. Or you have to explicitly say you're passing a reference. Uh, where, where, while using the assignment operator. OK, so now uh, we'll do the last modification to the uh, to the move script. And that will be, uh, yeah. So uh, what I will want to do now, so now when I start my game, the object does, just flies away. What I want to do is to have it oscillate uh, around its original position. So uh, for implementing oscillatory motion, uh, you go back to school for a while and you remember there were some trigonometric functions, some sines and cosines and we will use one of them uh, to, uh, yeah, to implement the oscillatory motion in time. So, uh, how to do that? Uh, so, in the rotation script, we were using the difference between frames to see how how much we have to rotate. There's another way to use the time, and that is. We can just measure the time since the start of the simulation or since the start of the game and uh, pass this to the sine function, for example. And when we pass this to the sine function, we get a number between 0 and 1. And we, uh, uh, we multiply this number by amplitude. That is how far our object will go. And we add this to the position. So we modify this position. Um, we modify the position. And yeah, that's it, more or less, right? So let's do it right in the move object script. Um, so now uh, our position. So first we need to get the time from from the start. Uh, so I'll call it like total time. And for that, there's a, a variable called real time, time dot real time since startup. Yes. Oh, oh no no no. Real time with with a lowercase t like this. So real time since startup. And 
Um, again, so that this line isn't too long, uh, we calculate the difference uh, that we want to apply. Uh, so uh, difference will be, uh, it will be a vector or, okay, it doesn't need to be a vector. Okay, now the, the difference will be just the result of the sign. Yeah. So uh, first some amplitude. So let's say something like two. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Let's define the parameters for the sign function. Yeah, there's a, a amplitude and frequency. So public float uh, frequency. Uh, it's gonna be a floating number, so let's start. Since it's two, I don't need to put F here, but it won't hurt either. Uh, public load amplitude. Uh, this will have, of course, to modify based on how far we want it to go. And that's something you probably set up in the scene visually because you see whether that thing is one meter away or, or 10 centimeters. And We do amplitude times. Now I would like to use the sine function, right? So probably something like this. Uh, it's not going to be enough, but yeah, I'll show you later. So frequency times the uh, total time. This looks like something that should work, right? except that the sign function in C sharp is not in the uh, in the main namespace. You have to get it from the math namespace and specifically from math functions for floating point numbers. So math f dot uh, uh, dot uh, sign. Yeah. Again, that's just something that's not intuitive. It's something how C sharp works. Uh, so this gives me um, a number which I can then add to the uh, to the position. This number will change in time between minus one and one according to the frequency and amplitude that I've I, I've set up here. Yeah. So this whole idea is not perfect. Uh, I will talk about the imperfection later, but it's also not correct. And do you see where's the issue? Like on, on, on the level of the idea, on the level of algorithm. Uh, if I run this, it will work. But will it oscillate along uh, along the original position, or will something else happen? It will oscillate related to previous frame. Yes, exactly. That's what will happen. So, if I run it now, uh, just quickly, I I, I will sh sh show it show it in a while. Uh, it won't oscillate. It will go. For, but you cannot see it, but it changes. Uh, the, the speed changes. Uh, but the issue is that I'm adding this number to the current position. So at the beginning, my sign goes from 0 to 1. So I'm moving it to the right, and I'm moving it there uh, faster and then slower. But then when I'm moving it back, I'm not moving it back from the original position, but like somewhere on the right. So it will slow down and will go back and then it will go forward again. So what I need to do here is to, because I said I wanted to oscillate along the original position. So I need to get the original position to save the original position and then oscillate along that original position. And the original position is where I've put the, the object at the start 
uh, or like uh, before uh, where I put it in the scene. So where the object is at the start of the game. So at the start of the game, I will save the current position and save it as some uh, original original position. So for that, I will need a variable again. And so it will be a vector, a vector three. I will call it original position. And when I start the game, I save into the original position uh, this get component uh, transform dot transform dot position and here instead of uh, adding to the uh, actual position I'm adding to the original position so just I'll leave it like this for everyone to finish So oh, everyone there? No, no, yes, no, yes, no. Any issues or just typing? So, it says I'm missing the comments. Okay, open it. I want to say anything to the um, uh, which was the line again? Seven. Eight. Hey, it doesn't mind us. Not me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Did you actually put the spin in something? If you write it on it, or like, did you attach to it to an object or not? So write it on it and find references in scene. Right. Find references in scene. Yeah, okay, it should be on feed one. So yeah, yeah, close this. Uh, start the game and uh, uh, clear this with the. Uh, let me know. Uh, there's this X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, go to cube one. It has the script. Go down. Yeah. So run it. Uh, run and 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 have have cube one select it and run the game. Yeah. Go up. So go up, 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 uh, we calculated the difference, and that's what we wanted to put here. I forgot this as well. Okay, I'll just quickly test whether this works for me. Uh, yes, it does.
Okay, so 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 this this should work. Yeah. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Is it on Linux? Yep. Which is the uh, RPM? Okay. Uh, no. Ah, yeah. Oh, that is. Uh, yeah, I didn't do. But uh, I, I didn't have them in in what um. You can check it by. You can use some older or older Unity version. I I know that, for example. Or you can also try a newer one instead of an LPS. You can you can try one of the non-LPS versions. But these artifacts appeared like about I don't know two months ago. Or something. Okay. Oh, so that's yeah, the yeah, ones yeah, you yeah. have. Yeah, 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 I did it as well. But for some reason, it's, it's just in the editor editor part. It's not in the in, in the game part. So like, Yeah, I mean it's it's not too surprising. Unfortunately, Unity treats Linux as a second-rate citizen. So, but most of the time, the stuff works. So, so hey, nice. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, and here, does it work? Oh, yes. Cool. So one last thing. Uh, if you now open the inspector, you see there's this original position, which actually says zero zero zero, which is not true, because as soon as I run it, it saves this number into original position, right? Now, while running, I, I could also like make it fake, fake that original position, and it will just use whatever I put here. It never changes back again, of course, unless I stop it, because then everything resets. Uh, if, uh, on the other hand, if I put something here uh, now in the editor uh, and then run the game, then again, it's going to be just reset to the value here because that's what I said in the script. Uh, while I'm talking about this, this that this uh, this variable, uh, it really makes no sense to have it in the inspector, right? Because it's some internal thing that uh, uh, that if you modify it from here, it just does nothing or nothing useful. So best what. Unlike the frequency and amplitude, which we probably want to change, uh, this uh, shouldn't be exposed to the editor user. So in order to hide it, we change the visibility to private. So our original position is a private variable and it makes sense because private variable is something that can only be edited from, from inside our class and this really is something that should not be edited from outside of the class. Uh, so make it private, save your file again, and then you'll see that it disappears from here, but it's still saved inside the script. So the script works and our, our thing oscillates uh, along the original position. How would you make it so that you inspect that we don't see a mesh filter, a lightning, frogs, yeah. etc. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. in you, you can only see transform mm -hmm. and then uh, yeah. the script probably remove whatever it is. Oh, uh, no, no, don't. Because because the, uh, if you just want to hide it, I mean, uh, those are there, so so you might want to change them. If you don't want to change them and you just don't want to see them, uh, uh, all this is properties of mesh render. So so click on the yeah, no no no, on the triangle yeah, like this. So now you see what what uh, types, uh, what uh, components your your object has, mm -hmm. but you don't see the unnecessary stuff. You don't want to modify, mm -hmm. but it's there. You cannot get rid of it. Yeah, it, it must be there. It just seems to me that you only. Uh, you don't even see these tabs. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do, I do. Oh, okay. 
Why I don't see them? Because I don't have them. My object, this the object I've selected, the object right. I'm moving is just this group which has those two two objects underneath. Yeah. Uh, fields are oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this. So this, I would say, is the end of the part where we where we learn the uh, basics of uh, C sharp Unity programming, and we can make a short break if you wish, or or what? Uh, you told me that at some point we should make a break. Start a bit about VFX. And then like half an hour, and then make a break. Uh, not VFX yet. Now we put in the the FPS controller from the oh, from the right. Unity asset. Yes, yes. Great. Then yeah, uh, yeah, 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 and then okay. uh, then we do colliders and triggers, and VFX we start with yes, yes. Uh, like for each group separately. Okay, Okay, so uh, can we continue? Any questions to what you've seen until now? No? Okay, so uh, now let's move from programming to kind of using the, uh, <laughs> using the, uh, Using the uh, uh, the unity, um, how is that called? Like using their asset store, like all, all, all the other stuff that Unity provides. Um, so what I would like to do now is uh, to actually turn it more into a game, so that you can walk through there. And again, uh, for the scientific visualization part, this still makes sense. Uh, because the idea here is to have a visualization where you can walk through the visualization using a uh, virtual reality headset. And since we only have one virtual reality headset, in order to test our stuff, uh, we will use the first player control instead of the headset. Uh, and we will just use the headset at the very end of the workshop. Uh, where we put all your scenes together into one big scene and and watch it with the headset uh, from this uh, from this computer. So I would like to get in this first person controller, and like I said, one option of course is to program it uh, using reading the key presses or like th there are better ways and it's it's actually not that difficult, but uh, someone has probably made it before and they probably made a better job than me. So why not get uh, what they did? Uh, for that, we will use the Unity Asset Store, which allows us to uh, buy or download free packages uh, made by others. Uh, to get to the Asset Store, um, to get to the Asset Store, that changes over the years. At some point, it was inside Unity. Uh, now I need to go to Window. Oh my God. Yeah. So if you go to Window and Asset Store, it will open. Oh, it will directly open. Oh, that's great. So it, it, last year, when you went to Window Asset Store, it just opened a window which told you, oh, the Asset Store has been removed from Unity. You have to use your web browser and gave you a link. Now it, it takes you directly to the Asset Store in your web browser. Just make sure that you're logged in. Yeah. So here on the uh, top right, you, you should see that you're logged into your Unity account. Because, yeah, you need to be online, you need to, uh, in order to get whatever you buy in the asset store to get it into, into Unity. So you open asset store, uh, close the advertisement, check that it's your account which is logged in, and uh, what, uh, uh, that, uh, yeah, you can look for assets, and what we want to find is this starter assets first person controller. So if you go start 
assets first person uh you should see uh, close the cookie bar uh here you will see uh start assets first person control from unity technologies there used to be two of them last year the other one was not from unity technologies but this is the one you're looking for so you click on it and um and since I already bought it, it's free. So this is, since I already have it in my assets, uh, I just click on open in Unity. You will have something like, I don't know, add to my assets or whatever. Uh, I'll just look at, yeah, 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 add to my assets, accept the terms of services. And finally, it should give you an option open in Unity. If you click open in Unity, you might also need to confirm that it should be open in the Unity editor. Yeah. And, so then, and then you just search uh, oh, first, uh, uh, search assets, first person controller. I'll open the search again. Or like you can see the. You, you can just input the name in screen. Search assets, first person. Uh, 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 like. Start start assets first person why is it called like this it's kind of confusing mm -hmm. yeah yeah the second line yeah so. everyone got it and then uh when you click on open in unity and like confirm that you allow your browser to open uh open the link in unity you should uh unity should open package manager and in the package manager window, you should see this starter assets first person, which I see. Open in Unity. Open. Okay. And now you need to click import. Yeah, click must agree. And it will tell you whatever. And now it will be install dependency. So they say install upgrade. It will download packages. It will want probably to restart Unity to modify something. So like kind of like uh, answer yes on every question. And at some point you will get back to Unity with your project running and the package imported. Um, hopefully. It also changes like with different Unity versions, the the exact yes, I need to restart the editor. Uh, yeah, with uh, some version changes. Uh, yeah, okay, I can save the scene. Now the editor restarts. Uh... Yes. And it will recompile the scripts uh, stuck somewhere or recompile it. Good, 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 good. Yes, say it will restart probably. Or yes. <laughs> and you know where you know, I have already. Yeah, have you clicked? Oh, you've already started. And is it important or not? Uh, how do I share in packages? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in packages. No, no, no. I, I think it actually it imports something into assets. So go to assets. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think mm -hmm. we need to because there's no, 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 no. You have to import it. Yeah. 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 Click import. And now we import here. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So after it restarts. You click import again, and again, install upgrade. And here with this window, which asks you which parts of the package you want to import, we want to import everything. So we just click import. And it will do stuff again. <laughs> Yeah, so there's the browser who doesn't want to do it. So go to Unity. 
if, if your browser doesn't want to this is the half unity image yeah window Manager. It's manager. And like this view, like this on, 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 can I? Like this, okay. Like this, yes. And it should be, yeah. Now you go download, then install, uh, restart, import, restart, import, etc. until you. So if in case your browser doesn't doesn't open it immediately, then you also can then go to Window Package Manager, and here you can change what sort of packages you see. So Unity Registry are the packages from the default Unity installation in project are the packages that are actually being used in your current project. And my assets is uh, the list of packages you have uh, you have bought or added uh, to your account in the asset store. So if if browser didn't open for you, you go here. And uh, in the end, after a correct import in your assets folder, you should have this start assets subfolder. Yeah. And so, in starter assets, uh, there's starter assets, first person control scenes, playground, which should look something like this. Uh, so, starter assets, first person control scenes, playground. Now, tell me who's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know. I know. You're there, hi. Um, playground, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you have to restart it. Yes. Playground, nice. And if you, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you'll get there soon, don't worry. <laughs> Uh, so if you you can play with the playground uh, so now if I hit play and I click inside the game window then I can look around with the mouse and use the uh, uh, ASWD keys and a space for jumping like uh, yeah that's basically a 3D uh, 3D game already uh, so yeah, um, I mean, you can make a TV game by importing the asset and the workshop is basically over, right? Uh, if you need to escape from uh, from this and get your mouse back so you can stop the game, you press escape and then, uh, then stop the game. And you can explore how it's made. Here you find there's this player capsule thing that has the... Uh, uh, that has the camera attached to it. So the camera moves together with the player. Uh, there's also some player flow camera, which, oh, and that's the same. Oh, okay. Why did they read it like this? I don't know. Okay. It's a bit more sophisticated than last time, or or is it? Okay, so what we will not need is obviously the environment, and you can also try to turn things off and on. Let's see. Uh, we will need the camera, we will need this camera script, and we will need the uh, the player. Uh, the player. Uh, so just like uh, when everyone is there, you get it already? Oh. Yeah. Um, so you can look around, just make sure you don't change anything on these three 
objects because those we will need to copy into our own uh, into our own project. Um, Uh, but of course you can explore. So you see that here on the player capsule, there's this first person controller script and that's something uh, we can click on it. See that it's a pretty long one, uh, not that bad, two, 270 lines. Um, it has some parameters like the speed of movement, uh, jump height, whether it's uh, affected by the gravity or like how is it affected by the gravity. Um, there's this uh, input object that actually reads from the input. So there's a lot of lot, lot of parameters that we will actually not use at all, but um, uh, camera root is something that's then put here to the follow camera script. So this thing knows which which transform to follow, and the transform moves with the player. And this is just the setup for the. Uh, for the main camera itself. It has all the properties we know from the old camera, so whether it uses skybox or solid color, color as a background. Oh, go there. Import the ports. Restart the ports. So, from the playground scene, uh, select all these three together. So, main camera, player follow camera, and player capsule. Or even better, uh, create a new empty object. Call it just player. And put these three objects so, under the player object. A new 3D, 3D object? Yeah, right click, create empty. Just create empty. And put player capsule, player follow camera, and main camera under the player object. Uh, right click, create empty, player. Player capsule, player flow camera, and main camera. now here you create this uh, object for the player and do those three objects right play create empty yeah player and and then we will 
transfer this object to our own scene. Unfortunately, that's very easy to do because we just right click on it, copy. So you, you got this, yeah? No? Yeah, then uh, drag the main camera. Uh, it was the main from the board. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so like hold it with the mouse and drag it under player. Yeah, to player. Yes. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Main camera, player flow camera, and the player capsule. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Like this and. When you did this, you right click, copy the player, yeah, this, copy, and then you go back to assets, scenes, you open your scene. Uh, you can save or don't save the original one, that doesn't really matter. And here you right click and paste, and you will see that you have a new object called player, which has all those uh, things on it. The one thing you see that there's, the player has a main camera and you already had the main camera here. So you should disable this main camera. Don't delete it because uh, we can use it later, but just here click, uh, select the old main camera and disable it here. So this was a, a lot of stuff, but uh, some stuff might go wrong. But you, you got a player here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The main yeah. camera. Uh -huh. Yeah. And here, here, where I click paste. Uh -huh. And then that. Uh, C window. Just use it like this, and that's fine. You'll be able to make the first main camera, that's the old camera. Yeah. Uh, not like this, click on the main camera and then here. This checkbox, yes. Which checkbox? Yes. So, did you, you got it? Fine. <laughs> oh, no, no, stop it. Uh, the main camera, disable the main camera. With the old one, yeah. Disable it. Uh, this checkbox, yeah. So now you see what the player sees. So oh. yeah, you should move him or rotate him so that he sees your scene. And you can use the rotate function, yeah. Yeah. Uh, probably with the green one, he's looking like. Oh, no, he's looking that, that that way, and you want. Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, you need to rotate the whole player object. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yes, hold the green one. Uh, now he will be. No, no, no. Really, hold the, uh, the green one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, then, then you can move him uh, maybe. Uh, I've been moving him quite far away, I would say. But why not? Okay, so uh, also position your player so that it can see your scene. In my case, I was lucky and I, he was there. But click on the main player uh, object or even like hide whatever is beneath because it's better not to touch anything that's down and like move him, move him around or rotate him so that he sees what you want him to see at the beginning of the game, yeah? Well, let's say something like this. And then, uh, then, uh, then when I hit start, 
what happens is that my player falls down mm -hmm. and keeps falling down. <laughs> and that's because my player is affected by gravity. And um, there's nothing to stop him from falling down. So of course, one option would be to disable gravity for the player. We will do something different. We will put some floor below the player. Yeah. So again, uh, try not to get lost in your uh, scene window. Uh, orient yourself. See where is your player. You can also uh, see where are your objects. This is my group one. Uh, okay, I can rename it something like that. You know, group one and group two. Um, uh, so if you double click on these, it, it, it will take you to the to the objects and you can also use this uh, these buttons to orient yourself in the 3D scene. And what I want to do now is to put some floor, so a plane that will that will be just uh, below my player. Uh, maybe I'll also I don't know I can put it lower. So I want to add a plane. So I right click here, or again, I go to game object and I want a 3D object, which is called a plane. And uh, if you're aligned along some axis, you won't see anything because the plane is really here. And I need to put the plane under my player. So, I grab it so it goes here, and I probably want it to be bigger because now when my player goes off the plane, it, he will of course fall down as well. So I get the scale tool and rescale the plane to my liking. Uh, of course, you can also modify what the plane looks like. So if I go back to my assets, I can make it like made of bricks, for example. And so now my player will fall a little bit, but then he stays on the plane. And he can move around. You'll we'll see that he will get blocked by the objects in the scene. And and of course, if I go over the edge of the plane, I'm falling down. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I think we can make a break now. Right. We or it was already a lot of the information. So yeah. ten minutes break. T is um, back to not fall into the ground. Working. Uh, oh, there Just hacked, and it, it was some issue with the with the .NET uh, 
Um, the digital text framework. Like, yeah, and the Microsoft and Linux. That's <laughs> weird combination. Not the uh, guy that, that it doesn't really work. That's the slightly okay. interaction. Yes, but but but, but you can get things like this. Yeah, this is something more than years ago. You would not get nothing. You would either just you would either use <laughs> something on the Linux only or yeah 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 that's true yeah. yeah. Uh, the engine of the start is uh not Microsoft implementation of the .NET framework, but they used um uh, Mono. 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 Yeah. And I I don't know whether they are still using that or it's the merged effort to the .NET core. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah. I, I I think that Mono. I don't know if it even exists as a separate project. Well, I mean, I don't know. I I hate Sharp. I only use it because <laughs> because of Unity. <laughs> And and I even because of the uh I I still do that uh, I still keep the Windows installation because um like most of the headsets don't work with the Linux at all. The one I have uh, at home is uh, Valve Index, and Valve Index is good because it works with Linux almost perfectly. But in the recent versions of Unity, the combination of, like, for some reason, it just doesn't work with new Unity on Linux. Even if, like, I can play, I don't know, Half Life Alex or like all, 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 all the cool Steam games in VR, like, through this proton uh, compatibility library. I can put all of that without the only issues. I can't say, but just Unity just doesn't work. I really can't say because you need to do it again. No, the reason is that, uh, so, uh, yeah, the, the reason is that Unity somehow incorrectly communicates with the Steam VR package under Linux. Uh -huh. And maybe they fixed it. I don't know. The last time I tried was like during Christmas and uh, it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. So there, there are other options, but like on Linux, there's this Godot framework, which is kind of similar to Unity, and it is like um, it is a different approach than than this these game objects. In Godot, you really build a tree, and every uh, you build your scene as a tree, and every tree node is is um, like you can make a sub tree of uh, out of uh, each of the nodes. So whether, whether it represents a scene or or an object, like really doesn't match that much because in, in so you can invite scenes in scenes. Yeah, scenes. Yeah, yes, 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 exactly. Like uh, all, all the stuff like this. And it's absolutely awesome. It takes a little bit more time to learn, like from scratch. Uh, so Unity is faster to learn. And I was very surprised that that uh, this this VR headset with VR just worked out of the box with Godot. Like I opened the, the, the VR sample and it immediately worked, like no issues at all. Uh, the reason I'm teaching Unity, like, like the biggest downside of Godot, okay, for some people is, is, is that Unity has much better um, like rendering options for 3D, like ray tracing and like all, all, all this, uh, like uh, Richardson is in the newest Godot, but it took them like five years to get it in. And uh, Unity has this asset store, which is way, way bigger than, than, than what you have in Godot. So, so, so to, to build something quickly using existing assets, uh, Unity is like basically the only, uh, only thing that works. Let's go into this. Hmm? Let's go into this. Yeah. yeah, I expected to find uh, out in the list of God of sponsors. It wouldn't surprise me much. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. And continue the discussion there. Uh, uh, but you also like to have at least imagine something. like lots of developer time when you change the class in the past weeks.
Я очень расстроена тем, что дочка не захотела пойти послушать, но я просто баллов не могу уйти в подходный и она же вот это все знает, и было бы, мне кажется, интересно. Но вот за все годы, как мы Так мы видим, мы с ней очень много, мы уже это не интересно. Она говорит, что она говорит, что она говорит, что это перестанция, и это очень сложно, и это очень сложно. Hmm. Yeah, we're okay. Okay, we can continue. So we have the player. We can move around, look around, like you know. Uh, like in a game, if we there's those solid objects that we cannot pass through. Yeah. How this works is that uh, inside the player object there was this player capsule thing somewhere. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I would have to go inside. Yeah, the capsule itself. So this. Uh, this is a 3D object, a capsule, like we've seen before. If I turn it off, then it disappears. It has this mesh render. And additionally, the thing that's by default added to those uh, to those like objects representing physical objects. And that's this capsule collider. And the collider 
Collider is uh, another mesh, which uh, which is just used to detect collisions. So when one object touches another, or when one passes through another. Um, so there is a collider on the player, and also when you click on your plane, you see that it also has a mesh collider. So what you can try is if you go to your plane and disable the mesh collider, then the plane is still displayed, but now without the collider, the player will fall through. Yeah. You can also do the opposite. You can keep the collider and disable the mesh renderer. So now in the uh, in the scene window, uh, I don't see the plane, but I'm still on it. So the mesh collider, the collider mesh collider is another mesh that just defines how. Uh, how physical colliding objects interact with one another. Mm. Also, just a note: if you want, if you made some changes to your camera before, now will they will be lost because this was the main camera we were using. You can still use the the old camera if you want to check the scene without without using the player, but. It, Maybe you also want to change, I don't know, like the background on the camera. So that's now the other object called main camera under the uh, under the player object. So what can also be useful? Uh, so let's let me take for example this cube i will put it a bit lower so yeah and i will make it bigger as well Uh, and I will get this cube and make it so that I can walk through the cube, but that I can make by disabling the box collider. But when I walk in, you see that the cube completely disappears. So that's something that has to do with the rendering property of the material. Um, and that is that normally uh, it's rendered only from one side. You can find it when you go to your material. So you click on the whatever object you, you want to change. And... Um, find the material and you will find this this render face property here if you change it uh, yeah now it is called front so 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 the so the object is only only rendered from the front side you can change it to both then uh, when you walk inside the cube uh, yeah you will actually be inside the cube yeah. Another another interesting property could be there's this surface type which you can change to transparent and then uh, wait.
then you can see through the cube a bit. Now this doesn't really play well with the uh, yeah, and you should select how much transparent it is by uh, if you go to the base map and the color of the base map. There's red channel, green channel, blue channel, and A, which means alpha, and that's the transparency. And you see if you make the alpha smaller, then you can really see through uh, see through that uh, see through that object more or less. Yeah? Now, like I said, with the mm, ah. so, hey, where's my partial transparency? Oh, oh, oh. okay, yeah, okay. Uh, you see that my object is partially transparent at the beginning, but I had this. Uh, uh, this color change, uh, color change script here, which uh, set the color, and when you set the color, it also sets the level of transparency. So I will disable the script for now. Now I have a see-through object in my scene. So the important thing here to remember is that uh, transparency is something that has to be enabled on the material, on the color of the material, and on the type of the shader of the which is used. So like it's a parameter you pass to the material, and that if you have objects that are transparent, and also uh, objects that you can walk through, you need to take care. Uh, that uh, that you're also rendering the back face of that object. Uh, that that's mostly important for the um, scientific visualization stuff because very often you want uh, to have the people to give the people the option to actually walk inside your visualized whatever you are visualizing. And if if you uh, if you're not not setting those. Mm, render faces and and transparencies correctly stuff can like randomly disappear and you don't know why now we won't be using those objects for visualization but like it's important to know about about those principles that there is something uh, like that um okay so now, the last thing for today, uh, let's get the objects interact with our player, or maybe even interact with uh, other objects. But for starters, uh, let's let's make uh, object uh, some basic player object interaction. So I move my player even. Uh, even further away and I create a new object let's say a cylinder but again whatever you want uh, I position it so that my player can see it uh, make it bigger again Uh, give it some some picture. Do I have a picture material maybe somewhere? Uh, something I haven't used yet. Okay, this is some random texture for some model, but why not? What oh, is uh, this? I already have the bricks. No, that's my brother. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, let's just use the um.
inspect stuff that needs. And I want to make it partially transparent. Uh, so I select my object, um, find the material of the object. Uh, change the rendering style and give it some partial transparency and maybe even give it some starting color shade. Yeah. yeah. So the way I did it now, mm, this object has a collider. If I try to walk through it, it won't work because I'm colliding with it. What I want to do is uh, to turn this object into a trigger so I can walk through it and something will happen when I walk through it. So um, I select the object and find its collider uh, collider component. And I check here the is trigger property of the object collider component. So everyone let me know when you have an object with which you turned into a trigger. I mean, all that stuff I did is like kind of like optional. Just put a big object somewhere in your scene so that your player can walk through it at some point and have its collider enabled, but set uh, as to be a trigger. Um, just, uh, I mean, right click here, whatever, create a new 3D object, mm -hmm. not a plane, not a quad, but a cube sphere or a capsule. So let's say a cube, then make it, make it big somehow so that you can like see that you walk through it and move it somewhere, uh, somewhere on your scene. Oh, I mean, I, I can put it here and, and just turn the player so that he can, he, he can face it. Hey. So put it somewhere on your scene and then go to the collider of that object and check the this trigger property. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So object, collider, and is trigger. And what does it do exactly? No, you'll see very soon. <laughs> and uh, your uh, cube, which uh, has, has the material, when you walk through it, it doesn't become transparent because it has a picture as a material. No, 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 no. It, uh... When I made it is transparent now. Yes, but when I made the cube and then made it... Aren't you changing the color of the cube from a script? Because if you change the color from the script we made before, then the transparency is reset to non-transparent. I'll show that soon. And the material, then the uncheck box collider, yeah, so that when we walk through it, it disappears. Oh, it disappears. Yes, so that's because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so stop it. This is because the material of your cube, mm -hmm. or like if you go to materials, the render, yeah, yeah, the whole material, open it. Or, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and the rent we need to change the rental place for people. Mm. Yeah, I, because if if you have rental place just from then it's just rental from the outside. So everyone got it? Uh, I don't know. So, oh, transparent. So, uh, go past. So, test type, transparent, yes. Mm -hmm. And then the color in the base map, like click on the color. Mm -hmm. And here, the, the last one is the transparency. You see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, go to the materials, open the materials, some um, material. Um, and then uh, material stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Some some material. Mm -hmm. Yes. Transparent. And then also we can change the okay. place mark. Yeah. 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 The, 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 the color. Um, yeah. Click on the color. No, no, no. no. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You can use the color. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so okay. now, okay, uh, you will notice that when you change that thing to trigger, uh, even if the collider is on, uh, okay, wait, so that means on my cylinder. So you see, I have the collider, I have the, it, but I can still walk through it, even if the collider is on. And this is because a trigger collider, um, yeah, a trigger is some defined collider where you can walk through, but when you are in, it triggers something, it, it calls a function that you can connect to and, and you can react to that function, yeah? So now we will react to that function, so, uh, we will create a new uh, new script, uh, and I will call it trigger trigger color, for example, and yeah. So trigger color. What I want to do is, when I enter the trigger, I will change the color to something, and when I exit the trigger, I will uh, change it to something else. Now, this script doesn't need to do anything on start. It also will not do anything on update because this uh, this change uh, yeah this this trigger uh, trigger event. Uh, uh, calls its own function, so I can delete the both of these functions and uh, write a function which will not return anything. So the return type of the function is void uh, on trigger enter, and this function has a parameter. Uh, so Mm. In order to trigger something, I need to touch the trigger with an object that has a collider. So it's a collision always. Two two colliders collide, and if one of them is a trigger, the it triggers this on trigger enter um, function, and the function has one parameter, and that tells you what was the collider that actually hit it, so that you can get the information of what entered the trigger so we need to specify that in the function definition and what we want to do we are actually not interested in the other collider now what we want to do is to change change our own color just to make it easier so get uh, get component uh, render. We already did that, right? And, uh, 
Eh, då. Material color. And because we, we, we want to keep the transparency, there's another way to specify a color. And that's uh, by using the uh, the color components, red, green, blue, and the alpha channel and specifying them directly as numbers. So instead of using those shorthands for the, uh, for the colors, we will create a new color with a specified level of transparency as the last parameter. I mean, you all know how to specify colors for, for a computer using RGB. Yes, no, no, okay. Uh, so a quick primer to colors. Um, if, okay, I get one of my materials, the red one, for example, and so, okay, most of us use the color wheel usually, but there's those three numbers here, R, G, B, and A. And each color uh, on a computer, on a computer screen is, uh, is made out of three basic colors, red, green, and blue. So the first value is the amount of red. If like, if I have no color at all, then it's zero, 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 that's black. If all colors are at maximum, then the result is white. Here's the resulting color. And then you have red channel, the amount of red, uh, the green channel, the amount of green, and the blue channel, the amount of blue. And you can mix them. Uh, the mixing works the opposite way than when you mix like uh, watercolors on paper, because this is uh, here you mixing the emission of the color, while if you're mixing colors on paper, you're mixing together uh, the opposite of emission, the absorption of the colors. So if you mix all colors together on paper, you'll get like some brownish, blackish something. If you mix all the colors uh, as emissive colors, you will get white. Yeah. Um, so. So yeah, this is how how we define the different colors yeah, right here, and from three. Of course, it could be more, but uh, all the computer screens are made of those three basic colors. Uh, they more or less correspond to the uh, to the um, color. How is it called in English? Like the stuff we have in our eyes that detects the color. Um, teaching key what chromatic cells, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, probably, yeah. So, there's it's not that easy, apparently, but most people have four of them. Some women have a gene that gives them a fourth one, which detects something like this, like dark pinkish shade or something, which is interesting because then when someone tells you that, like, you know, men only like understand those four basic colors Man can only see 20 uh, frames per second. <laughs> it might have something to do with like some real biology stuff but again uh, it's not even true that 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 we have this red green and blue it's much more complicated than that mm -hmm. but like in in the first uh, approximation it is like this and that's also the reason why uh, uh, why we are, why we designed those those computer screens to to use exactly these colors. But it's also not the only color palette. Like oh yeah, 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 of course, of course. It's it, just uh, the handy way of presenting it. And yes. So yeah, far, it was working very well. No, it works because it's kind of like it's designed close, close to, to the real world. Uh, yeah, um, and it's designed to. To closely mimic what we have in our eyes, so so the the differences between what the computer screen sees uh, shows and what the object in the real world would look like are not that big. But of course, like it's not uh, it's not perfect, and it cannot be made perfect. And um, yeah, and also 
most of the computer screens have actually four subpixels on one pixel, even if you just have three colors. And what they do is like the green pixel is there twice. And that again comes from the um, the way we perceive colors because humans have a much higher sensitivity uh, to the shades of green than to the shades of any other color. That is like obviously important thing if you're uh, out in the fields and forests where we lived for most of our history. Um, yeah, so mixing the colors, three basic uh, inputs, red, green, and blue. And the fourth one, the alpha channel is the transparency. And here they go from zero to 255, uh, where 255 is the maximum. You can also have them go from zero to one, where zero represents no presence of that color and one represents the color is there uh, on full. Yeah? And this zero to one representation for each of those channels, each of the color channels, red, green, blue, and the alpha channel, is exactly how we will specify the color here in the script. So I create a new color and in a similar way as I was do creating a 3D vector here, this is a four element, uh, four element entity, which specifies the color uh, RGB. So if I want red, uh, I put uh, one, Zero, mm, zero, and the alpha channel. That's the important thing. So let's say I would like half half transparent. So this is what happens when I enter in the collider, and similarly, I just copy this whole thing. Uh, rename that function to on trigger exit, and as you probably guessed, this is what will happen when I exit from the uh, uh, from the trigger object. And let's change the color to something different so I can see the change. Uh, so blue is the last one, for example. So this will be fully blue. I keep the transparency at 0 0.5 because why not? So uh, I save the script. Everyone got it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So save the script, go back here. And, and put the script, the trigger color, put it on the trigger. So that was this cylinder and Okay, this time, for example, I will use the add component button. Okay, first I will hide this zoom thing. Okay, add component and not the rotate script. I want to find the uh, trigger color script. And hopefully, when I start it, ah, okay, it's already red, so. So, because I made my, so my my trigger was supposed to turn the thing red and it's already red at the beginning. So it's like, just like not, not very well visible. So I just choose whatever green as the starting color so that we can easily see what happens. So I have my trigger, I enter it and it turns red. And when I exit, it turns blue. 
Ja. So that's some first level of interaction. What we can also do is um, we'll expand this script a little bit. Um, so when I enter my trigger, I change the color of some different object than the trigger. Yeah. So let's say I want to change the color of uh of this uh, red uh, red cube or like uh, change the color of yeah, well, anything i i will choose and it will be it will be even better so so uh, let's open a script again and like I said, now we are changing the color of the of the object that the script script is on. Hey, everyone got it or that, that... Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. You can use text like that. Uh, I'm not sure if, 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 if maybe, maybe you can even set it into the slider, or maybe not. Should we check for white contact? Uh, uh, we'll spend uh, we'll uh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now we will uh, uh, now we will change the color of some different object than the one uh, than, than the trigger itself. And what how we will do it is that uh, we will also connect that other object to select it from from our scene in the inspector. So first we need some variable that will hold a reference to that object. And it will be a public variable because we will want to set it from the inspector. The type will be of game object. And uh, okay, it's like something. And now how to change the color of something else than than myself. 
That's very easy. So instead of getting the render of myself, I need to get render of this something. And I do it by calling the get component method on the something object, not on myself. And that I do just by putting something dot get component and the rest uh, rest stays the same. So by doing this, I'm adding a new variable called something and then I'm modifying the material of this something instead of uh, instead of the original object. And when I save this, I save this, I go to I go to the scene and on my trigger, I will rename it to trigger so I can then easily see which one it was. Uh, yeah, you see that there's um, there's this field called something, and into this field you can drag uh, drag some object from your scene. So if I drag, I can just like select it. But be careful with this dragging thing because uh, if you like click here and let's say I want to put the sphere here and just click here now and I selected the sphere and I cannot drag to the uh, to to the field. Of course, uh, of course, another way is to click on this um, on this circle target and then select the correct object from the list of the objects but be careful because you will you might see a lot of objects who are not even like aware where they were where they were because you just see their names nothing else yeah so if you know where the object is here you grab it and now uh, now on entering and exiting the trigger, it's the other object that actually changes color. Yeah. And again, I've selected a red one, and so instead we can, uh, like I said, I the script. Uh, you can also see that although I set the car color to be transparent, that other object is not getting transparent. The reason is that its material uh, is not set to be rendered by the transparent method. Yeah, so it was like the transparency also needed something else. So the script. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Of course, of course. Uh, yeah, you find the something and drag it on top of the something field. So 
requesting to open the open object which has the script. Yeah. Uh, no, we didn't want to know which which object. Yeah, which one is it really? Okay, so hold it with the mouse. Ну, ви знаєте, ви повинні вперше до неї прочепити цей скрипт, щоб вона реагувала. Тригер колола, тепер відкрито цей скрипт. Тригер колола, скрипт, тригер колола. А, я пам'ятаю, там не є змінювати. Сенфал, це сенфал, це сенфал, це сенфал, це сенфал, це сенфал, це сенфал. Ну, тут краще сумка, просто це чисто візуально, воно нічого не міняє, але краще вважається. Хоча, може, і міняє. Ну, що тут? Ну, не знаю, що тут. Я не думаю, що це як інвайт, але ви... Ні, 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 Yeah. It looks like here I've seen this one. No, what could it do uh, anything? I think the unit is just not applied. Um, Bigger color, but it's cylinder. We don't have a cylinder. You yeah, you do, you do. No, no. It, uh, um, click on it. Uh, yeah. So it's this one. Yeah, and this one is yes. that different object. Yes, it's the next task. Oh, you want to answer yeah, it yeah, here yeah. and this? Uh, yeah, it's cylinder okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. And okay. you don't want this key to be transparent. It's, yeah, it's, Do you want this brief sphere to be transparent? So they're just like go to the sphere and to give it transparency. I tried, but it didn't work. Sphere. It's now set up. Yeah, I should just type in it. It's been transparent. Yes. And now, and now the base map. And uh, change the alpha. Yeah, but if, uh -huh. he, if he wants to change it on in the script, then he needs to change it. Yeah, no, but in the script he's changing the, uh, the yeah. so we made the different part with so, 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 mm -hmm. so last time mm -hmm. and more of the you know if we change the color. So, does it work for you? What are you trying to do? Uh, check out for you. Yeah, to, to so, see if it changes yeah. the color, you you would be required yeah, to look for the size. I, I yeah. thought that you were uh, you would have seen the color partially. partially. So the ID or not? Yeah. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ah, yeah, that 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 is definitely the problem then. Okay, stop. Apps, material yeah. tree, and then and showing the material. No, is there any material applied to that? Let's see. Let's see. So this yellow. Yeah, yeah, this is the one. Yellow. Yeah, yeah. And you have to buy the object that you change color. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. So, so with this one, you need to select what uh, what object mm -hmm. should, should be changing color. So uh, I don't know. But it seems mm -hmm. as though it is applied. Mm -hmm. oh, so I open the cylinder and here on the script I need to oh, grab the sphere. Oh it didn't mm -hmm. no. So we shouldn't do it. Oh, we don't need to go. It, you you go in the trigger. So mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. And try now. Mm -hmm. I think that was the problem. You were changing one of them, but the other one was yeah. the speed changed to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Não, já dá muitos anos. Working? The color has changed. It has too much to the object, so it was confusing, but still the oh, color okay. has changed. That is so confusing. And the transparency should also be changing. Okay. Changing. okay. So, so what's happening now? What happening? The, color, the color is not changing when she is entering the screen. Really? Okay, show me. It's so it's the blue cylinder that should be changing and it is doesn't. Okay, okay. So stop. Change yeah. again the cylinder. Yeah, if we go to the sphere. Yeah. You have disabled the collider. Ah, the collider. Okay. okay, good point. Ah, yeah. so so that it detects the collision. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So the big collider. Yeah, yeah nice one. Now, now it's okay. So, uh, and I think this is more or less the last thing I wanted to show today. I hope so. We we know how to trigger. Uh, we know how to react to the collision. Uh, of course, there's um, this is on trigger enter on trigger exit. There's also an event called on collision, and I think they they again. Like two, like on collision enter or collision and exit. I'm not sure you can find it in the documentation, and that also works for objects which are not triggers. That really works for objects that you, you bump into. Yeah, so that's cool for games. But I, now we're like slowly stopping making games and starting making serious stuff <laughs> for the scientific visualization for the art part, whatever, and. Uh, so uh, now uh, you also have seen how you can connect uh, two game objects together, like in a sense of one influences another. And um, the last thing I wanted to show is, oh yeah, uh, just a quick note that uh, this trigger, doesn't uh, need uh, to be rendered. So I can keep the collider and remove the renderer. So now there's nothing here, or at least you don't see anything here. Yeah. But when you pass through the trigger, it still triggers, yeah? So that way you can make like uh, areas which are like invisible, but when the player enters that area, something happens. That's actually very useful. And the last thing I wanted to show is how your... Um, so, so now that you know how to influence some other object, I will also show you how to influence your own script on some other object. Yeah. So for that, let's say, uh, let's say we find, for example, the rotating thing. So you had this uh, rotate. Okay, I had two of the scripts. So I find this rotate object uniform. I forgot which which object it was. So I right click. Uh, on the script, I know it has to be something with the script, find references in scene. And here it will find that it was this object called group one. Um, so I open the group one object and I see there's this rotate object uniform script. It had the rotation angle that was actually like the uh, um, angles per second and the difference so maybe we will be changing the angle um, and then the, the, the speed of rotation from our script um, so I go here and okay I have two options I can um, yeah, let's let's keep it simple. So 
we had a something object and uh, we were getting its render and changing its color. Now what we want to do is to get uh, this custom script we wrote. So maybe yours has a different name. Mine is called rotate object uniform. So this one. And like I said, the, the this is only a class name, the same as our class name. So if I want to get this script and change its parameters, I also can get component rotate object uniform. Yeah. So on the other this something object. So I go something dot get component uh, rotate object uniform. And now I need to change the property, uh, which was rotation angle. So dot rotation angle equals something. Yeah. Um, so I'm accessing the game object that I've connected to my object and I'm getting the component which is actually my script. Uh, so from my script, I need to know the correct name of the variable I want to change, this rotation angle in this case. And uh, again, like I said, in, in C Sharp, it's not like Python. So you can actually, if your line would be too long, you can split it in two lines. So here I continue on the second line. And what I will do is I will double the speed of the rotation when I enter the trigger. The end of the command is not the end of the line, but the semicolon. And when I exit the collider, I copy this whole thing here. And when I exit the collider, um, I just slow it down again to the uh, to the value it had before uh, before I did it, or like to be more visible, like four and zero point five. So I'm changing the value of rotation angle, which is the uh, property of my own script. The script was called rotate object uniform. What I'm doing here is making it four times faster and on trigger enter. And when I exit the trigger, I make it back uh, four times slower. If you have the script ready, then one important thing is that the object you now connect to this something field, uh, the object has to actually have the rotate object uniform uh, component. If it doesn't have the component, the script will fail and uh, it will stop processing the script completely. about the problem of uh, converting double to close? Mm, if you have that problem, you just like need to specify the or or where like, like here in, in in it shouldn't give you a problem here. I hope. But it does in line eighteen. <laughs> Mm. Ah, okay, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah. So, like I said, the important thing is that uh, you need to have the correct object. So in my case, it's this one. Uh, 
So I'll just rename it to rotating group. And I connect it here. And then when I run it, oh, my trigger is now invisible. Ah, <laughs> okay, okay. I, 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 so in my case, this will not work because I have a different, uh, different error. No render attached to the rotating group object, and that's true. My rotating group doesn't have a renderer, but in the script, I wanted to do two things. Mm. Uh, yeah, here. Two things. I wanted to change the renderer and I wanted to change this uh, rotation angle. Wow. Uh, okay, so I either just do one of them or I can do something else and that's uh, I can have more game objects and I can change the color of some game object and change the rotation of the speed of some other game object. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, now this, okay. So I change something else. I mean, everyone is at least able to do it with with the like the custom script on the single object. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Okay. So. Um, yeah, because your script is has a different name. You have this new behavior or something. So find find the one that's rotated. Uh, which of those object it is here? Probably. Uh, so go go to the uh, to Unity. Click play. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, okay, okay. Whatever. Uh, no, go, go go to the game object. Go go go. Yeah, go here. Yeah. So new behavior script three. So go to the trigger script. O open the script. Yes. Uh, copy. Mm -hmm. Copy this name. New behavior script three. Select it. Copy. Yes. And um, yeah. And instead of rotate object to next one, put put this. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Okay, so now, uh, now if I go back here, of course, now now I uh, I will have two game objects uh, that I can attach to the trigger, something and something else. I just need to know that something was the rotating thing, and something else was the one with the render, right? Um, so let's say I do it like this and then yeah, so now you see the rotating thing is rotating faster or slower and this cube changes color yeah that's what you wanted right to make that stuff even more visible i will move the cube so that i can see it better and i will make this 
uh, rotation not by four but by ten. Oh, and I completely forgot where's my trigger. So this trigger cylinder, I, I give him the render back. So at least I can see it. I try to do another public you have to the function can be defined only once but it can do multiple things so 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 instead of doubling this on trigger and and on trigger exit you put it just like as another line yes 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 exactly Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, 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 yes, 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 exactly. And when on trigger enters, we will see the thing. So, I'm going to do it in a question. Може це все на те, що ви повинні були зробити, просто не наскільки я бачу, вона має обертатися. Ні, ні, там затомітили чотири рази. Чотири рази в кожну сторону, тобто різниця має бути в чотирнадцять рази. Ну зараз вона обертається, наскільки ви зараз зайдете в цю зону. А може тригер не там? Може вам вас тригер вим? Yes, now we need to connect the so go to the trigger. Yes, and you need to connect the second object. Yes, the first connected and the second is now. So you have to put the correct correct. Who is the first and who is the second? I don't know. You need to look in the script. So, uh, one, uh, uh, yep. So, uh, it seems like it works, like, yes, if it could, uh, because, like, you mm -hmm. have to provide the name of the group to which we added, but it, I, I, I was not following exactly what you were doing, mm -hmm. but I, I, I suppose you want it, uh, when you enter the object, you want uh, it to rotate fast, and when you exit, you want it to rotate yes. slow, and it does change the color here, it's visible. But uh, there is no change to the speed of the rotation. Mm. I'm not sure what is wrong. Maybe rotation uh, angle is the wrong parameter. I don't know. Like uh, we didn't enter yet. Like oh. I enter. Yeah. We see the change of the color, but no change in rotation speed. Like it would be visible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, okay, it's, stop, stop, if it's stop, one stop, fourth stop, and yes. it's four. So. Mm. Oh, this this guy was rotating fast. I noticed. Was it? I think yes. So it's a different group. Ah, oh, no, it's already rotating fast. Let me check. I'm watch. I'm watching see. No, nothing changed. Okay, stop. Mm. Uh, open the trigger. The, which trigger? The trigger. One game object. No, that that which has the trigger script, the cylinder or oh, yeah. 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 Mm. Oh. Oh. yeah. That's okay, it's okay. Uh, something is V1. Select the sphere oh. one. Select the sphere uh, one. It rotates the sphere probably. Mm -hmm. It cannot rotate the sphere is this if the sphere yeah, doesn't that, have it. Yes, I think here instead of sphere one, it should be the game of yes. Yeah, but the game object doesn't have the renderer, so so this will also it's weird because it should give you an error. I don't know why it's not giving me that. Okay, stop. Can you just go to the console? Yeah. And um I press collapse. Collapse, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so go to yeah, the script. 
uh, here, uh, like the script. In, in, yes, yes, yes. And now one object has the uh, rotating script, and the other object has the render. So that's why we made two. So the render put like something else instead of something as the name of the object. Or the first one, the first one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, my name is something else. Uh, in, in the first? Uh, okay, now we have to do it twice. I don't know what, what is something, what is something else. Exactly! You don't know what's something and what's something else. Don't, so, don't make the it. last thing, uh, of course, uh, some of you uh, then had problems like which thing should be rotating and which thing should have the texture uh, or the material. So, you see here we were getting a game object and then finding the component of the game object. There's another way to do this. If we know that we'll always just manipulate this one single uh, component of that game object, we can instead of requiring a game object here, we can directly require the component that we, that we expect. Yeah? So here on something else, I was changing the renderer. So uh, something else will not be a game object, but a render. And on something, I was um, changing the, uh, yeah, this thing, uh, like that's your custom script. So I can, uh, I can require this to be of, of this specific type now. I also don't need, not only don't need, but I cannot use this get component render because this is already a render, yeah? So I just delete all the get component functions. You see that my code got much cleaner, shorter, and safer. Because now I'll show that when, when you get it done. Made some changes to the public instead of game object, I say directly the name of the component or the type of the component. Huh? That way, it makes your syntax uh, cleaner and also it kind of protects you from accidentally referring to something that is uh, not what you think it is. Yes. it works well until I do this. No, it's mm -hmm. not. It's bad, uh, bad, bad, bad get component. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Yeah. 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 
Можно закрыть все, как ну, да, все. И один еще тут в Питере, так сказать, пойди, вот тут подмолчу. Да, да, Колер настанет, но настанет, что это будет, я вам подумаю. Да, 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 Yeah. И звонок с тебя So what you can also try um, changing the rotation of the or the importance of assets. Yep. But then I'm not joining it. Okay. Uh, is it uh, uh, something for movements? But if oh, no, it follows or... the same controls as uh... it just repeats your movements. Yeah. It actually be like super visible. <laughs> so... And was it in the asset shop? Oh, um, yeah, it's basically a reference uh, aside from. You need to take care of for yours as an example. Mm -hmm. But you have to download it. Yeah, of course. Of course. Just that some uh, packages, some assets you need to download, not from the store, but from the outside, so like yeah. from the you know, or elsewhere. So I was curious. Ah, yeah. 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 So you show. I mean, you can, you can move it like lower so you can see it better. Or... So what you can try now, of course, is uh, if you if you try to drop something that doesn't, I don't know, if my groups don't have a mesh render. Yeah? So if I try to drop the group here, it just won't allow me to do it. Yeah. That's it for today. If you have any questions, need some more help, just let me know. 
And how oh, everything works. Right. Exactly. Yeah, there is another. Yeah. Okay, but wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I'd like to ask. Uh, I did something to it. Uh, at the I don't want to be able to work ah, no, but I don't know if I can't okay. yeah, so well, I can't do it. Okay, uh, stop it. This is uh, the the uh, uh, problems. The, the library, yes. Yeah. Uh, they have a box collider. So I Something else was the child is so good to win the render. I have the kind of snow in the middle. You can actually walk inside. You see the, the, the green cube, but the that she wanted to be in the wall, and it was like that she was very young. So, so the stairs also, yeah? Yeah. It's composed of the mesh renderer. If I turn it off, the the stairs disappear. Uh -huh. And the box collider that, that this green green part is. And why don't so, so 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 the collider doesn't need to be in the same shape of, of uh, as the whole thing. Yeah. Well, and in general it's not because why is it? Mm, I think it was it was made like this from the uh, from the beginning. Perhaps it was a quite the, the renderer was yeah. a cube and then I changed the cube into the ladder and changed the size but the renderer yeah. so, so now you can you can change the size of the collider. Um, and there is this edit collider and, and made it into a ladder. Yeah. Well that's the thing, like uh, it's a box robot, I think it's time to just I mean, it, it's a box slider, so uh, it will always just be a box. Uh, you, you, you cannot so turn it to a different shape. Then you would need to use a different collider, which has like some different shape. And shape colliders are kind of like different to so. make. So, I mean, walking on the stairs works because it looks like stairs and you can just like jump on this collider. So, like, you can jump on the wall on that box, so it looks like the you walk walking the stairs. So, if you can make another example, like this, you can make another example, like this, you can make another example. Uh, the, the thing why, why this is disconnected is also because the uh, collision detection is a very expensive algorithm. That's that's why you use those simplified colliders. So so you can have like a very detailed mesh, but the collider will always be something uh, uh, something where you can easier compute the uh, the collision very quickly. So here's everything fine. Okay, great. Yeah. So yeah. Tomorrow we are asking for shadow. Huh? Uh, the, the schedule for tomorrow. I am checking the poll. Uh, In a progress. lot of people a lot of people uh, registered for the second half of the day. But on the other hand, uh, we probably can't do it like only three hours per day. We would need to expand it because if everyone wants to attend both workshops, then uh, we need like 12 hours in total. At least not 12 hours, three, three and three, three for another one. We can combine it, it will, it will be not 12, but for example, like nine hours because yeah. some stuff overlaps. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, so how many people do we have which don't want to go on board? Practically not. I mean, ma okay. maybe one person, but we will force them to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, just, I just can't. I would want to, but I okay. have lectures. Uh, uh, which day? Yes. Tomorrow. Whole day. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the morning. 
Oh yeah, so you can come. Uh, Don't let the 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 no, 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 no. Yeah. Oh That's right, okay. we want it. We want it tomorrow. Okay. We want it in yeah, the because morning. we can tomorrow morning. We can we can take the the, the, the two girls who that that, that who do who yeah. miss today, and and everyone else can come on on the afternoon, and then everyone is on the same level. Okay. Uh, 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 so if you can come if in the fine. afternoon, yeah. then, then 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 you will not miss anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all of you then uh, come tomorrow at four. Mm. Okay. Oh, and but on Friday, uh, on Friday, uh, just uh, I have a very strange uh, schedule tomorrow. It's like some small thing, two hours of break, uh, some small thing, two hours of break, and uh, at least you live nearby. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> I just. Uh, and on Friday, uh, it uh, can be just three hours, but I think it should. It's better to make it like full day. More or less, or like uh, 1.5 of the day. Because... I mean, to me, it doesn't matter at all, of course. Because otherwise, we just uh, do, don't have enough time to finish both tracks. Uh, yeah. If tomorrow we have only three hours of new content, yeah. then we are still missing nine hours, which can be like condensed into six. Yes. But for that, we need six hours on Friday. Yes. To have Saturday free. Yeah. Yeah. But we still can like catch up with stuff that we didn't want to do yeah. on Friday, on Saturday. But so yeah, yes, yeah. I would say it's a Friday six okay, hours. Okay, so, so so you have Friday basically free to do that. And at the workshop, I have a, a little arrangement in the morning, but then I can also come. Uh, okay, okay. I, on the works, you have an arrangement from uh, uh, What time? Uh, around six weeks. or seven, and we okay. have to be in the center. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, uh, I mean, also like to, to 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 be here from from from, from on a. Uh, yeah. Let's finish a bit earlier on Friday, so so not push the like whole six 12, hours on Friday. Yeah, from twelve till sixteen. Yeah, more or less from twelve to to four or five. Mm -hmm. And uh, and like like I I think that at the end of the Friday session, it it, it already should be like. More free, like expo exploring what, what what you can do, cannot do, and and you can finish that on Saturday. That, yeah. That's fine. So like, mm -hmm. if you leave earlier because you, you need to be in the uh, in the city, that's that's not a problem. Okay, this works. So, so 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 if it works for you, that yeah, that that's tomorrow. Uh, who was here today? You start at what three? Or, or four? Four, four. four, yeah, at four. For all of you, yeah. it's four, and for those who miss stuff, they come at the right yeah. to the group right now. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. huh? So the uh, the last thing, the mm -hmm. the scanning, uh, the scanning app. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy. There's instructions uh, in the Telegram group, so you download this. Uh, App called Polycam. Uh, there's also this web interface. Uh, um, and uh, of course, the important thing is to get it to your mobile first and use a Ukrainian number to register the app because then you get the uh, pro version for free. And uh, yeah, so this is what Polycam looks like. It's just uh, basically. Just, can I move it? We're not using it, or are we uh, no, it? it's turned off. Uh, it's turned off. Okay, so you find something object, and it's it's best if, if if it's not a shining object and it has like no reflecting surfaces and. Um, yeah, there's uh, the, the, the app has two modes. You can either take the pictures manually, then you try to like make enough pictures from all side, sides, or there's like automatic mode when, uh, where you have like, it has like a small picture of camera and you just push it and slowly go around your object, try to capture it from all uh all angles and you can go closer and further if it's something uh yeah if it's something that has some uh 
uh, like here, for example, there, there's this detail of the uh, of the screw. So I try to get inside. Uh, another thing is that I know that sometimes those, like I was trying to get uh, get a good scan of a tank, and uh, like those those protruding tubes sometimes make an issue. Also, here the metal parts are shiny, so we'll see how it ends. Maybe it will work, maybe it won't. And I'm spoiling you one of the good results. This is one of the scans that he did in Dnipro. Oh, you can see that you can see that it gets all the details quite well. Yeah, and and, and the Motanka, which I scanned at home, that, that was pretty well. That was the first scan I did, and it turned out really, really well. So I make something like 140 pictures of of this camera. Uh, for like complicated objects, we take several hundred, five hundred, or something like that. Uh, I click OK. Then uh, I select the level of detail. I recommend to go for full detail, and then click Upload and Process, and it will upload it to the cloud. And after a couple of minutes, I should get the. Um, Yeah, I should I, I I I should see it also also. So now it will be processing. Um, so you've seen that I was walking around a stationary object. There's another uh, another way to to use it. That's actually how I spent uh, this motanka, and that's uh, you you. We have more or less a stationary camera, and you turn the object around. Yeah. For that, there's a different mode. So, yeah, last time we tried the mouse and it didn't work, right? So, I don't know. Let's say we want to take a picture of this, and I don't want to put it somewhere and walk around it. That's you're crazy. So. Yeah, and uh, of course I I need to not 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 to have my uh, my hand visible, which was easy for the motanka because it would hold it from the inside. But okay, so okay. I will rotate the object and the camera more or less stationary, more or less I can go around it a little bit. So now because I don't want to have my hand in there, I am taking the individual pictures manually. I need to capture all the connections so that it can, so that it knows what was up, what was down. Here the problem might be again with the lighting. Because when, yeah. The best place to do it is outside when... Actually, uh, if you want to do a really detailed scan of like some doll you have at home or some figurine, whatever you have at home, bring it here. We have these uh, strong uh, light sources. We can put it yeah. on the table and okay, that, make a very good scan. And yeah, make yeah, very yeah. Good scan. So well, yeah, if, because that's what you want. You, you want if you try, to yes, light. yes, exactly. If you try at home and you are not happy with how it ended up, and it can be carried here, carried here, and we can do it here with mm -hmm. this light. Yeah, and it should be carried here for the month. as Whatever. soon as possible yeah. because then you have extra time to work with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So and when 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 you have uh, when you take the pictures of the object like this, a, a small one, when you rotate the object instead of walking around it, there is this uh, selection use object masking. So use object masking when like doing this this kind of small objects, and hope it will work. And yeah, with the with the lights, uh, like Volga said, either. 
either this this different like that's that's perfect or when it's uh, when you uh, when uh, when it's cloudy outside, not sunny, because because sun gives you a sharp light, but uh, if if it's cloudy, then uh, yeah, then you have diffuse light coming more or less from uh, from all directions, and that's why uh, when when this works the best. And I have the first one. Uh, you see that my uh, the camera is still processing that was like 140 pictures but this uh, remote control which used object masking is already <laughs> processed and yes <laughs> i mean one side is pretty good yeah the here the top the was, wasn't there because i probably yeah i i think i sure. forgot to 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 like specifically uh yeah so <laughs> uh this also is the result of, of this uneven lighting because uh, you, you could see it in the picture that sometimes it, it sees this um, this side as dark if uh, like light if, if it turns to the window but from here it, it, it has seen it as dark and it sometimes get confused by this because it only compares colors and when it cannot connect the colors it will just like completely drop a bunch of photos you made Unfortunately, it never tells you which uh, which photo was making problems. So it's most of the time just easier to completely redo the scan. But yeah, that's like on a couple of tries, after a couple of tries, you, 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 you'll get it right. And by the way, the, uh, the, <laughs> this this piece of Russian junk I, I, I made here last year is a really popular model. <laughs> like people download it a lot. <laughs> uh, if I remember, that's a cruise missile uh, engine. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It was just like on the floor in front of the, like the, there's this museum near the yeah, near the yeah. motherland monument. I don't remember correctly that it's an engine from cruise missile. From which? From cruise missile. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked like, I, I mean, since I didn't know, I just called it Russian junk. <laughs> that also may be why it's so popular. <laughs> like, I mean, if you go to my profile, there's this. Wait, wait, wait. It's 51 likes and 31 downloads. 38 downloads. Like the piece of rust, yes, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, this app is not that popular, yes. So, oh, yeah, yeah, and 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 this one, this is the oh, this was in 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 the ATO museum in Dnipro, the statue of the soldier and and the girl, it's also popular, yeah. <clears throat> So if taking a picture doesn't work, we can always download the, what other people have scanned in their website. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean you have to publish it if you if you want that the other people can can download it. Yes, but we can download other people's scans. Oh yes, of course you can, but like it's better to make your own. So here is the scan of the camera. Oh, there is me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if <laughs> if you and, and you can see that 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 the uh, that those like thin um, um, like tubes that they don't work well. Thin parts might disappear. Yeah, I, I mean it, it, this really depends on the quality of the lighting. Yeah. And they uh, have like those uh, missing parts, like part of the chip is there. But yeah. Not. Yeah. But now, if you only want the the object itself uh, from the regular scan, like not non mask, you can you have this crop uh, crop and rotate tool. You can also do it on the on the phone, but it's probably easier done on the on the computer. So yeah, you just use the uh, one.
uh, you crop out the parts you don't want. Uh, apply. For this again, this is switching between. Yeah, see. Okay, I'll have to rotate it a little bit as well. So I uh, I use the rotate tool so that it's level and I can remove the floor without removing stuff I didn't want to remove. Yeah, sometimes like it's a really primitive tool to do this. Uh, of course, you can do it in some serious 3D modeling program. But if you just want to do it quickly, you can also use negative crop. So for example, if I want to remove this, this piece of floor here, if I do crop out, it will crop it out. Huh? So uh, when I'm done, important thing is it's only stored in the browser and you won't see the changes on your phone. You have to always click the sync button. It will upload it and then you can sync it back from the phone. So this, you, you I mean, you can be locked in in the app and in the browser, but the changes in, in cropping and uh, and other modifications don't appear automatically. So you have to sync manually. And like, if, if you have any questions then of how to use it and like uh, need some help, then ask me in the, in the Telegram chat, uh, if you need some more tips on like what, how, how, how to, how to make some of this, um, yeah, that's how to make it work better. And like I said, like you can do inside stuff, outside stuff. This is, I think it was also from the, uh, from the Dnipro ATO, ATO museum. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can do outside stuff like this. Um, it's kind of better than the camera because Probably because it doesn't have much. It, it, it's the uh, it, it's mostly because of the of the lighting. Mm. Like here, especially the, the issue is that if you if you have light coming only from one side and you're inside, uh, inside a room, then also the exposure of of, of mm -hmm. the phone camera changes if you're facing the window or if you're facing away from the window, mm -hmm. and then literally the color the camera sees is different. So so like from the from the side, if, if I'm standing in the window and watching here, then the camera appears black. And if I'm fr uh, watching from the other side, then the camera appears like uh, gray. Yeah? And this this confuses the algorithm even more. So, but yeah, big, big stuff like, oh, oh, I don't know, this is not the big one. This is the, but in Wave, they have this big, Shevchenko monument, but like right next to it is a small Shevchenko monument, like the model of the big one, because of course I couldn't, couldn't do that. For that, you would need a drone. Uh, but this, for example, that that was that was a pretty pretty big thing in Gipro, and I only missed some parts at the top which I couldn't see, like here. But otherwise, like. Basically, going through the gate with pretty good detail of the of the statue in front of it, like going through the gate itself. That was a bit confusing to the algorithm again. So it has seen some of the background and actually made it part of this of this bell. So, so of course, this shouldn't be here. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes it's it, it's not perfect, and sometimes it will be better, sometimes worse. Just three supports for three D printing. Hmm? These are three supports for three D printing. We don't have to add them additionally. No. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, these were like small statues, like, like this. Oh, uh, yeah, and this one was so, was too close to the, uh, this one was close, close to the wall, so I couldn't, couldn't go behind it. Uh, yeah, this, this one was in the middle, but also like, uh, you, you see, this was also the result of, of like, being inside the room and having having the light coming just from one side through the window. I suspect there might be even a solution somewhere, maybe based on polycam, maybe like not no, no no which based on neural networks and all these new uh, developments that it can clean up all this mess as well. No? No, 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 no. Not yet. I mean, Polycam is still best at, 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 yeah. at automatic cleaning of the meshes. So, so, so you you, you won't get anything okay. better than that. But uh, uh, you can use uh, like you can use uh, 3D Studio Max or something to delete parts of the mesh and then then have reconstruct uh, then have it reconstruct the rest based on neural networks. That that works as well. Yeah. But again, you need an additional software to do that, and and it takes. Yeah, otherwise, it takes the artists time. would be really, yes. really. <laughs> yes, and uh, uh, like the, for example, if I would like to do a color color correction uh, correction on the texture, that you can do in free software like Blender or something. But again, like you need to know what you're doing, and it will take time. So this is this. Uh, remains of the uh, Russian tank painted pink. It's like a famous statue in Prague. That's near, near my house. And like back in uh, uh, 90, 1990, after, after the Soviets left Czechoslovakia, they left this monument to the first tank that uh, uh, that entered Prague at the end of uh, Second World War. It wasn't really the first one that entered Prague because, like you know, Russians even lie about their monuments, like about everything, basically. And it, like, it was there. It was near my house, so I remembered it as, as a small kid, like walking around it. And now, right after the revolution, one one Czech uh, Czech artist just like went there and painted the whole tank pink. And that sparked some outrage, like, oh, it's like, why do you paint a pig day? But then no one really, no one really wanted to like put it back or something. Something. So we had a pink tank on, like this big. <laughs> I still remember it. But then they removed the tank completely. Uh, the the whole thing, yes. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> this is the original Soviet monument, and this this is how it looked like in the nineties. <laughs> so yeah, but then then they moved it. the whole tank is somewhere in a museum, and the artist just like bought a different piece of tank and just like the 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 back part and and put it. This is actually across now it's here on this part of the street, but. Uh, he painted it pink and put it back. And I mean, it's here, like kind of illegally at the start of the invasion, they, it changed colors a, a lot of times. They also at some point had it like in 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 blue and uh, blue and yellow, then 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 pink again. And uh, it's across the street from this young Shevchenko statue, which is. Which, I mean, I, I really like the symbolism because you have, um, you kind of have, wait, I should show you, show you what it looks like. So, um, it's somewhere uh, here, yeah, it's this small square, yeah. Uh, so, Shevchenko is here. And this is the place where the original tank monument was, but now it's empty. There's a fountain there. So like he's looking at the, this this place which used to hold this uh, this Soviet piece of 
fit. And it's like, I like the symbolism. Like we had the Soviet tank, it's not there. We have Shevchenko looking uh, over over that place. And, and the pink thing is now, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Here here it's it's blue, yellow, now, now it's pink again. So it's here, yeah. Maybe like blue and yellow again, but we were here. <laughs> <laughs> so so I I went there and and took both uh, the scan of the pink tank and the scan of the Shevchenko statue. So here I actually wanted even to get on his head, so I borrowed uh, like a selfie stick, so so I could I could reach reach there. It's not perfect. It's there, like you can still see that that the very top I couldn't get to. But otherwise, otherwise, I think he's pretty okay. Yeah. Even again, like with the, you can even read now. Ah, okay, it's a little bit, not not perfect, but almost perfect. And that. Took me like ten minutes of walking around the statue. I think it was made out of like six hundred pictures in the automatic mode. So uh, definitely enjoy making your three D models, and see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, absent sixteen.